Hi everyone, welcome to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this um, mile a minute baby blanket. Now, obviously, I've made this for a little girl. Um, at the moment, it's just half the blanket, but this is exactly um, half, and I'm going to show you um, how to make these um, mile a minute strips and attach them using the crochet as you go method. And um, I'm going to just um, do the other half in this tutorial. So for this tutorial then, I'm using various shades of pink, ranging from light up to a darker one. So they're not all the same make, but they are all DK weight. Um, every one of them is quite comparable in size. The only one that's not DK was the fluffy yarn. I used pink, but that uh, I made two strips with the pink and it was just enough to make um, two. There was none left over at all. I played a little bit of yarn chicken and one with this. There was nothing left. So I don't have any more of that one, but this is what I used. It's called Peter Pan Precious Chunky and um, it is classed as a chunky, but um, sorry about that. Although it's classed as a chunky, the strip is exactly the same size and it's only really classed as a chunky because of the weight, um, you know, the, the thickness with all of the fur. But it's not too, it's not a ridiculously thick yarn and so it fitted in quite well. You don't have to have a fluffy part to it, but I just fancied having one. But I've made several other strips and um, ready to attach and border. So I'm gonna show you with this color how I'm going to do the strips. Now I'm using this um, tulip rose crochet hook, which is a four and a half millimeter. I've got a pair of scissors and some darning needles <clears throat> and a drink, which uh, is an optional extra and you'll need some stitch markers. Now, I've got four, that's all I need for this particular tutorial because each one of these strips is um, 44 of these um, shells, for want of a better word. They're a set of three um, treble crochet, which is a UK term, or double crochet in the US, with one chain and another three. So each one of these, it's 44, but that does not include the bottom part, which is different. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. Oh yes, by the way, I've also put this Robin paint box. I've got quite a lot of this left over and I wanted a variegated yarn to pop in and um, I tried several but I didn't kind of like the way that the colours were spaced out. But this one's spaced lovely, so I just thought it would also inject a bit of brightness and colours. But there's lots and lots of pinks in this, so it worked just well. Um, I'm not sure if you can get hold of Robin paint box anymore. I think since lockdown and the coronavirus, um, Robin has um, had problems and possibly ceased trading but any variegated yarn that you have will do you don't have to have any variegated at all you can have just solid colors so if you haven't already please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be informed when there's new videos but i'm just going to pause the video now clear this away and get cracking showing you how to do this Right, so once you've got your chosen colours, now if you've wanted to, you could make this um, in another weight of yarn. You could make this in four weight. Um, I've chosen three because I've got quite a lot of three weight yarn. But if you wanted to make it with four weight, you just need to adjust the crochet hook size that you're using. And um, if you keep to the same amount of segments, then you will just get a slightly larger blanket. So what we're going to do is start with a slip knot and you can make that however you normally would. And once you have, we're going to chain seven. Now the middle chain, I always do slightly tighter 
than the others because otherwise it can make quite a large hole. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through once, yarn over, pull through twice, yarn over and pull through three times. So I have three chain. Now this one I'm going to do the same but I'm going to make it a little smaller. And I'm holding on to it and I'm going to do another three. So now I have seven. Now in this one here I'm going to do um, a UK treble crochet which in the US is a double crochet and to do that I'm going to yarn over I'm going to put my hook into that stitch yarn over and pull up a loop so I have three on my hook yarn over pull through two of them yarn over and pull through the other two so now I have my chain which count as my first treble crochet and this one which counts as another so I'm going to chain one this is making one of the ends and as I said it's going to be different to the rest of it so now I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go back into that same stitch and I'm going to do another two of those UK trebles or US doubles and as you can see working in this quite a bit does make that hole a little bit bigger which is why I do that tighter in the first place now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do another set of two in the same space and chain one now I'm going to do one more in there now just as with the other side our chain counted as our first one these chain count as our last I'm just going to zoom in so you can see more clearly I'm going to slip stitch into that very first one move this tail out of the way because it's confusing and yarn over and slip stitch in so now we have four sets of two separated by these chains and now I'm going to just ignore that tail which is annoying I normally work them in but that would just confuse you I'm just going to zoom out because it's a little bit difficult to show you so close so now we're going to chain two because if I get one of my strips not the fluffy one obviously now we're going to be working on these segments so we have got to the end actually the other end doesn't matter which one I show you I know but this is the one we started with and I've worked over my tail so this was my first one so now I've done these two chain here and I'm going to be working in the other side so this is the ones we've just done I've chained two and we're going to work in the opposite side so that's what I've done now so I'm going to turn it so that it's aimed downwards and remember that tail just got to get rid of that so now I'm going to chain sorry I've done my chain chain two I'm going to do two three sorry get this right in a minute I'm going to do three UK trebles or US doubles in that space exactly the same as I did just now one my second And there's the third and I'm going to chain one and pull that over slightly see what I mean about this hole gets bigger um, that's why I do it smaller so that when it gets bigger it's not huge so now I'm going to do three more which is the other side of the segment and now just as we did two chain here to get up to that height we need to do a treble into this very first stitch there at the top of our chains which counts as our stitch so if I make that larger and show you exactly what we've got so it doesn't look like a post at the moment it just looks a little bit like a strange circle but this is the bottom part We've got two chain, which is our first post, and this treble here acts as our second post, 
and we've got our three chain one and our three now we're going to repeat that until we've got 44 of these segments so it's just the same as before chain two turn it now in this chain space between our segment we're going to do exactly the same as we just did before where we have three one chain and another three there's my chain three more if I go too fast then just by all means pause it and catch up but I feel whenever I show anyone it's best to watch one first so now here we are this is our post and this is our our first of our trebles so we're going to do another one in there in that stitch not in the chain so we're continuing this post so if you can imagine that these are like um the tall stitches at the end just um making our posts either side and then our segments in between so now we've got to the end we're going to chain two again turn it round and work into this center one by doing exactly the same as before there's our three one chain three more Any time I'm ahead of you, just pause it and catch up with me. Just need to pull out a bit more yarn. So now here we are again at the end. There's our two chain. This is our last stitch, which would have been the first one on that round. So we're going to go in there and do one UK treble US double all on its own. And that is how we're going to carry on. You can either turn and do your chain or chain and then turn it makes no difference as long as you're doing your stitches you've got three the one chain and that's where you're putting them and we just continue like that until our strip is long enough and for this particular blanket I've done as I say 44 of these um, segments so with the two ends that's 46 but the ends obviously are different and then I'm going to go into that stitch there not the chain and do one more stitch two chain and turn and we're going to carry on like that just need to pull out some more yarn I'll do a few more with you and uh, get you get you started And now I'm going to go back in there and do my next segment. But just remember that the very first one we did was four lots of two. And the first and the last were the chains that we'd already done. And you separate them by one chain. Just keep turning and going into that center. That's it. Sorry if I'm going a little faster. There we are and we just keep doing the same thing it can be a little monotonous but it's quite effective mm -hmm. okay then 
you just see there's our three into the last one so what I've done in the past when because it's hard to count what I'll do is I ignore turn out the right way I ignore that bit and then I will count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then I place in a stitch marker as I'm going so once I've done ten I put in a stitch marker and then I'll do from there I can count another ten as I'm going obviously place another stitch marker do the same so that when you come to look at it and you think how many have I done I haven't got to keep counting you can say there's 10 20 30 40 and then you know you need four more before you get to the end so that's what the stitch markers are for just to um, help you as you go along when you've got 10 you can pop in a stitch marker so we'll do a few more although I think you've seen by now how you carry on just doing this all the way along all the way to the end until you've done 44 or if you want to make this longer you decide how many you want to do but as long as you start and end with the right side so this is the back obviously because this is uneven so when you start and finish they'll both be this way round so I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back to you when I've done my 44 and show you what we do when we get to the end of the row okay so I've now got apart from my end I have 44 of these segments and every 10 that I made I popped in a stitch marker so I knew when I got to this one all I needed was one two three four and then I was finished my 44 so now I need to make my opposite end just gonna untangle my yarn a little bit so now what we do is we turn our work and we'll do our two chain as normal and then into this one here we're going to do the exact same as we did on the opposite end so we're going to do two of our UK treble or US doubles into that center one chain then another two and then another chain and then another two all into this center one more chain so we have four all together four lots of two so we need two more in there and now we need to make this post the other side just the same as we have been all the way along by doing our last stitch into there and now we've completed our strip so all we have to do now is cut off a nice long tail and end off and I usually end off by doing one chain cinching it right down low and pulling it through and it doesn't matter if it sticks out a little bit like this because that will get completely covered up when we go around it okay so now I'm going to show you how we go around I'll just pick up my yarn how we go around each segment so the first one we will go round the whole thing. So at this point, you will make however many of these strips that you want. Now, for me, on this blanket, I'm going to do exactly the same again. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I will have another five strips and I'm going to do two of each color. So now we get our white yarn just going to pull that out okay let's get enough of my white 
and I'm going to take out these stitch markers because we don't need them now that was just so that we got the right amount there we go and I always start at this end because I don't want to have two to sew in at this end so I always start at this end so I can get my crochet hook and um, I start this side because this is the right side remember both of our ends will face this way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore all of this end so there's the four lots of two there's one two three four so I'm going to start actually it is the one where I ended off never mind doesn't matter I'll sew both in doesn't matter so I need all of my stitches along this edge oh well why have I got two I've got two joins That's strange never mind <laughs> completely threw me so I'm going to start here because there's my two my two my two and my two so this one after the post along this way after my four lots of two I'm going to join my white into that post to into the into the space not not to join it to the post so I'm going to pull that through now with my I'm just ignore this tail but with my working yarn and my um tail I'm just going to do one chain then I'm going to drop that and I'm going to do another chain so now I'm going to do in each of these segments all the way along all of these now we're working into the sides of our segments I'm going to do three so those two chains count as the first one that's the second and that will be the third push them together because that one looked a little different so I'm going to pop them down there out of the way because otherwise it will get confusing so now you can see all of the spaces in between our segments and that's where we're going to do our groups of three move those out the way so not in here but in this big space so we're just going to do three in there and into the next one three in there and then into the next one so basically it's past the segment don't get confused with where the segment actually kind of joins We're just going to do three in each one of these all the way along all the way to the end but with this one we are going to go all the way around so just make sure that as I said you're not going into this space here which is part of the segment you're only going into these large spaces and you're doing your sets of three just like this so I'm going to pause it and I'm going to go all the way along and I shall catch up with you once again when we get to the end. Right now I realise that um, I could have done this in two parts. Um, the, the actual strips in part one and the, the border to them and the join in in part two. And um, I didn't really want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to time stamp. So if you want to, um, you'll be watching this, but if you wanted to revisit it and see how to put this first one on and then how to put the joining ones on, the timestamps will be in the description box. So we've got to the end and we're back um, around the edge. So this one here, as you can see is part of a segment so we'll put our three in there as usual I just wanted to show you the difference 
So now we're at the edge, you can see there's our two, and another two, and another two, and our last two. So this is going to square this edge off. So we're going to put three into this space. Some mile a minutes, I just need to pull out some yarn. Some mile a minutes, they don't have a squared off edge, they have a circular or a pointed, but I wanted this one as a baby blanket with a border to have a squared edge. So now I'm going to chain one and do three more in that same space to form a corner. Pull it aside if you have to, just to make a space. So we've made our corner. And now after this two here, we're going to put three which will form our edge to our strip. So now you can see it's squaring it off. And in this next one, after this two, we're going to do another corner. So we're going to put three chain one and three more in the same space. Again, if you have to pull it along slightly, then that's fine. And then we're back to normal with our three in this space. I'll work over that tail a little bit there. So that's why I said it doesn't matter if that end looks a little odd because you're just going to cover it up anyway. So if I pull that out, then I'll show you that that has now squared off the, the edge of each of the strips. And so when you join them, it will form a flat edge along the top of the blanket. So now we're going to do exactly the same by um, going into each one of these segments all the way along until we get to this end. So um, exactly the same as we just have. I'll pause the video and I'll meet you when you get to the bottom. They're exactly the same just by going into, this is just a tail, ignore that, just by going into these between the segments with three. Now we've reached all the way to the end and all that's left is this part. And as you can see, there's the two, four, six, eight, that separated by the uh, the chain. So in this first one again is a corner because we want to square that off. So we're going to do three, one chain and another three in the same space. And then in the middle one, middle gap, we're just putting three. Exactly the same as the other end. And in this next one, the corner. And then all we have to do is slip stitch into that first stitch to end off. Find the scissors. I always leave a nice long tail for sewing in. And then just going to do one chain, cinch it down and pull it through. So now we've got two squared off ends. So that's how we do the first one. So this is the work right way around. And as you can see, it's nice and square. So what I do is I will do half again, half, finish one halfway round, and then I will crochet them together. Now, if you didn't want to do that, you could just make them all like this, but it is an awful lot of sewing together all the way along the edges. Plus it's a little bit vulnerable. Um, I'm, I don't know if you've ever had a seam that you've sewed come undone on you, 
but it can be a little bit vulnerable. If you've crocheted it together, I don't think it's going anywhere. So I'm going to show you how to do that by using another square, sorry, another square, another one of these. So again, we are going to start in exactly the same space. Just need to get my white. Um, I'll use the other end, obviously, because I've got that, that join. So we're going to join it in exactly the same space. There is the four of the end. So I'm going to join it in this one here, the first of the segments. In exactly the same way. Drop that one. Do my chain. And then I'm going to do my first segment by doing another two stitches. And I'm going to go all the way to the end, exactly the same as I did before. So I'm going to pause the video because you've seen this part before. I'm going to do three in each of these spaces between the segments all the way to the end. And I'll catch up with you once I've done that. Okay, so I've made it to the end, just pulling out some yarn. And I've got one more segment to do before I get to my pairs. So there's one more group of three to do in that one there. And now I'm back to the corners. But it's slightly different this time. I'm going to do the first one as normal. So I'm going to just do this with three and one chain and three. For any time I go ahead of you, just pause it and catch up. And then in this one here, which is the center one, I'm going to do my three just as normal. And now this is where it changes. This is my next corner. I'm going to do three. And one chain. And that's where I'm going to finish it for now. And I'm just going to lay that there like that. Make sure I've got enough yarn out. And I'm going to bring in my finished one, which is over here. And I'm making sure that it is right side up. Let's move the scissors out of the way. So we're now joining this at the corner so that it will sit like that. So what we do is we get to the center of our corner and we're gonna aim the hook down. And then underneath here, we're just gonna hook that yarn and bring it through. Doesn't matter it's all baggy, just pull it tight. Not too tight, obviously. The tighter you pull it, obviously it won't look natural. So then you slip stitch that through. And now we're going to complete our corner by doing three more in there. It's a little harder to hold. When you're sitting down, maybe um, you can do it at a table like this. But I sit on the uh, settee on the sofa and I find it much easier to do this without holding it like this. So now you just look, you've gone in at the corner, your next segment's there, you pop your hook through and you hook your yarn, bring it up and then slip stitch it through. So now we go into our next segment, ignore that tail, I'm just gonna work over it and do our three as usual. And then you've, you've joined this one. So your next one is here. You're going to aim your hook down. Scoop your yarn back up. Without letting these be too baggy. And pull in three. And then I'm just going to drop that. And just do my three into my next segment. I think I'm working over the tail there. Doesn't matter. I can always pull it out and secure it properly. And 
And then you go to the next one. You can see where you've joined. Aim your hook in. Loop your yarn and pull it through. And then just pull it like a slip stitch through that one. And then you're joining as you go. It looks a little bulky for now, but it does flatten out. And then you just keep going to your next segment to do your three. Then you look along, just as you've been doing, pop your hook down, loop that yarn up, and then pull it through for a slip stitch. Obviously not too tight, otherwise it will pucker. And then not lay naturally flat, not too loose, or it will make a yarn bump, which you don't want. So you just want the tension nice, and natural as you your tension has been all the way through pop it in loop it up slip stitch it through and then straight into the next segment so it's not difficult it's just fiddly with um, working the two together if it's not for you then you can sew them but sewing them as I said is very tedious and time-consuming and it is well worth learning this little extra skill. So it's ever so easy. Once you get going, it's just the natural way to do it. And you can join other things, not just this. And then again, next one along, aim it down. And loop it up. I think there is another way where you can you take your yarn out of your hook and then put your hook in and pull it through, but that takes longer and it it this looks just as good to me. So I prefer doing it this way. You don't lose your stitch, it doesn't come unraveled. You've got your hook in at all times. The next one along and loop it up. So as I said earlier, I did these really parts one and two together, but obviously I know that it takes time to make your strips. And so I will timestamp all these things for you to just find them easily when you need to. If you're holding on to this one, you're not going to have it too loose. And just keep going. Exactly the same way. All the way along so I'm going to pause it and I'm going to carry on join in as I go like that until I get to the end and I will show you what we do when we get to the bottom but once you once you've done it it will flatten out nicely so I'm going to pause it now and catch up with you at the end of this strip Okay, so I've made it all the way to the end and I've done my three in my last segment before my corner. So just as we joined the corner at that end, we're going to do exactly the same at this end. So we are going to, whoops, Daisy. That's right, and we're going into there. Sorry about that, I noticed that I'd gone wrong. I'd missed a segment out. And uh, I know exactly what happened. My cat was playing with my yarn ball. And as I was trying to scush her away without knocking everything over, I managed to go in the wrong segment. So uh, I put that right. So now, as I said, we are back at the corner. So this here, these are this is our last segment. And we're now we've got two and four and six and eight. So this is back where we should be. So once we've attached our last segment, we'll go into this one as normal and do our first three. I wondered what on earth I'd done wrong then because I'd counted them all. But um, note to self, put the cat away. So now where we go is into the center of our corner and then loop our yarn up and pull it through and do our slip stitch 
And now we finish off our corner by going in the same one and doing our doing our three. Sorry, I'm deviated from the uh, the path then. I moved it. So now we've done our corner. I'm going to show you that one more time just in case I wasn't in the dead center and um, I don't want that anything to go wrong with that. So we've finished our last segments and we'll do our three in our first part. So there's our, our doubles. There's two there, two there, two there and two there. So we'll do three. Why am I... It's tending to travel. Let's go back. There we are. So, yeah, we're going to do... I'll do it one more time with you, just because that was a bit confusing. So that's where we left off. And these are our ends. We've got these four pairs. And so the first one is our first corner. So we'll do our first three in there. I made sure the cat isn't here. She's uh, hiding under the bed now. And so we're going to put our hook dead centre into the corner. There's our first three, one chain, first three. So we're just going to pop our hook in. Now it doesn't matter if you do your chain before or after your join. So I'm going to do it after. And then I'm going to put my three into the same spot to finish that corner off. And then in that middle one, it's just three. And then this one is a full corner. Just the same as before. Pop it across if you have to. And then we just join it by slip stitching into that first stitch, which is the two chain. And then we'd end off. And then we have joined both ends of our blanket. And that's, I'm sorry it got a little confusing there at the end, but I really thought that I'd done something wrong there and I, I couldn't figure out because I knew I'd counted them and put my stitch markers in and it was all <laughs> all the right amount and uh, but when I looked I'd managed to and it's easily done it's easily done instead of putting my hook through and picking up I went into the next one so it bunched up two together like that once I figured out what I'd done I was, it was only about here that I managed to go back quite easy and put it right. But that's how we do both ends of our joining as we go. We just loop, loop at the corner there. So now all you need to do is make your strips, edge your first one completely round, and then all the subsequent ones, we start at the same spot, go all the way uh, around to this point and then join at the corner and go all the way back so simple really i will put in um i'll put in some time stamps for all those things and i'll list them in the description box so that's the end of this particular video i'm going to leave you then to make your blanket you can choose whichever colors that you want i know you won't probably get the same yarn as me in any case but these are the colors that i've been making mine with and um the fluffy one which run out so there it is but you don't have to include a fluffy one if you don't want to it is quite difficult to see where you're stitching i did it by feel and just by experience really knowing where to put it but obviously this kind of yarn is extremely un sorry is extremely forgiving if you make a mistake would you see it so as long as you can feel where you put your your segments 
it's quite easy to um to get into there it's quite easy you just you can feel them and pop them in and it's uh but i liked to put a fluffy one in you don't have to but as i said the one i used was um i can't find the yarn band now i had it here just now it's gone must have fallen on the floor or something but it was this I am just think I might be a little zoomed. There we are. It was just a pink version of this one. But you can use any yarns, any weight of yarn. Just adjust your hook accordingly. And um, whatever colours you want to use, you can use all solid colours. You can use more variegated. Um, you can use solid colours on your strip and variegated around the outside or variegated with solid around the outside. I've done actually combinations of all of those, but you can use one of each color and carry on just making it like an ombre effect. <coughs> um, the, the choice is yours, it's um, possibilities are endless. So I'm gonna leave it there and I will show you how I've done my border in another video so thank you so much for watching take care and i will see you on the next one